Hey, happy Thursday morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. Let me remind you one more time, do not forget my upcoming debate with Dr. David Hester in Montgomery, Alabama, June 15th and 16th, 2017, of course. And then we have Preterist Pilgrim Weekend coming up July 13th through the 15th. Our theme this year is the problems with postmillennialism. You don't want to miss either one of those events. Well, I've been sharing with you in, a, <clears throat> in our thematic development and study of 1 Corinthians 15, the theme that Paul has for us when he says, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, flesh and blood shall not inherit. Resurrection would get rid of, quote, flesh and blood. We've already talked about that. It's not talking about biological bodies. But Paul talks about resurrection and entrance into the kingdom. All right. I've shared with you just a, a small fraction of the Old Testament prophecies that lie behind Paul's resurrection doctrine and how they all tell us that that resurrection would be at the end of the Old Covenant age of Israel in AD 70. I'm going to share with you one final Old Covenant prophecy, and that is the book of Malachi. In the book of Malachi, God said, number one, He would send His messenger before His face, and that messenger would prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord would come suddenly to His temple, and the question is posed, who shall stand before him when he comes. Now, by the way, that's quoted directly verbatim in Revelation chapter 6 to talk about the coming of the Lord and the vindication of all the blood of all the martyrs. I don't have time to develop that, but I hope you see a little bit of where I'm going with it. All right. This day of the Lord of Malachi when he would come to his temple. Well, that's the Messianic temple. That's Revelation 21 and 22. That's Ezekiel 40 and following. But here's the messenger, <clears throat> and it's also, Behold, I will send Elijah, my servant, before the coming of the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Now, we, we saw in our last video that the coming of the Lord is Zechariah 14 for the resurrection, the opening of the fountain, the river of life. So here is Elijah that would come before the coming of the great and the terrible day of the Lord. The, the great and terrible day of the Lord, i.e. the day of resurrection. And on, by the way, the rabbis are very clear on this <clears throat> in saying that Elijah would come and prepare the way for the resurrection. The, the rabbinic literature is full of references to Elijah and resurrection. So as far as Jewish belief was concerned, the connection between Elijah and the great and terrible day of the Lord, the, the connection between Elijah and resurrection is absolutely undeniable. It's absolutely irrefutable. Okay, now, watch this. Jesus said that John the baptizer was Elijah. Not if, not sort of, not conditionally as some claim. I tell you that Elijah has already come. Matthew 17, 10 and following. And the disciples understood him to say, or to be speaking, of John the baptizer. So John was Elijah. Now, what would happen according to Malachi? Malachi, when the messenger would come, he would come to his temple. Well, that's the messianic kingdom temple. So here's the coming of the messenger. Well, was John the messenger? Well, of course he was. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, Behold, I send my messenger before my face. He will prepare the way before me. 
Here is the description of John the baptizer emphatically and explicitly being identified as the messenger and as the voice. Now I could go to Isaiah 40 and develop that, the relationship between the coming of the Lord, the judgment, and the resurrection, etc., but I won't do that here. So we have the messenger <clears throat> who would herald the coming of the Lord to his temple. His temple is the establishment of the kingdom, the messianic temple, kingdom temple. But he will also be the coming of Elijah who would herald the great and the terrible day of the Lord, the day of judgment. Well, judgment and resurrection go hand in hand, don't they? Matthew 25, 31 and following. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 3. I mean, folks, the connection between the day of judgment and the resurrection is also unbreakable. Now watch this. Remember, John was the messenger to herald the coming of the Lord to the Messianic kingdom temple. John was Elijah to herald the coming of the great and the terrible day of the Lord, the day of the Lord in judgment and resurrection. Well, what did John have to say about kingdom, about judgment, about resurrection? As John was baptizing in the river Jordan, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came out to him to be baptized. And John was proclaiming, the kingdom of heaven, what, what's the kingdom? Messianic kingdom temple. The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. And as the Pharisees and Sadducees approached him, he said, Who has warned you to flee from the wrath that is about to come? Judgment. And then in Matthew chapter 3, 10 and following, John said, the axe is already at the root. The imagery there, according to the Greek, means that the axeman has already laid his axe at the root. He is getting ready to swing that axe and strike the root. Well, look, folks, that's directly from Malachi chapter 4, the prediction of the great and terrible day of the Lord when the, when the Lord would destroy the wicked right down to the root. So here is John saying, the axe is already at the root. Then he says, his winnowing fork is, is already in his hand. Well, look, you've got to catch this. The winnowing fork was an instrument used after the harvest, at the end of the harvest. It was not a harvest tool. Do you catch the power of that? The harvest, therefore, had begun. And the end of the harvest was near. Well, Jesus said the harvest would be at the end of his age. The end of, quote, this age, unquote. And then John says, And you shall gather the wheat into the barn and shall burn up the tares with unquenchable fire. Folks, that's, that's harvest. That is harvest. And John said the winnowing fork is already in his hand. So what do we have? From Malachi, we have the prediction of the kingdom, the Lord coming to his messianic temple, kingdom temple. We have the prediction of the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord, the time of judgment, the time of the resurrection. And we have Jesus emphatically identifying John as Elijah. We have Mark 1-3 identifying John as the messenger heralding the coming of the Lord to his temple, the kingdom temple. And John, as the messenger and as the voice, and as Elijah, in, emphatically and repeatedly said, the kingdom had drawn near, the judgment was about to come, the axe was already at the root, the winnowing fork was already in his hand, the harvest was almost over. The end of the age was coming. Now, folks, unless you can completely divorce John's message as the messenger heralding the messianic kingdom temple 
unless you can divorce the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 from the great and the terrible day of the Lord. And remember, the great and terrible day of the Lord is the time of the resurrection. It's the time of the judgment. It's the time of the end of 1 Corinthians 15. So unless you can divorce John from 1 Corinthians 15, John is Elijah, guess what that means? That means that John's message of the imminent kingdom, the imminent judgment, the harvest underway, then that means that the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15, the gathering of the wheat into the barn, and the judgment of the tares was already underway. Well, after all, Paul said Christ was the first to be raised from the dead, the first fruit of the harvest, right? Yeah, harvest was underway. Look, the significance of John as Elijah simply cannot be overemphasized. I have written one of the most extensive studies of the eschatological significance of John as Elijah that I'm aware of. The title of the book is Elijah Has Come, A Solution to Romans 11, 25 to 27. Go to my website, BibleProphecy.com, DonKPreston.com, order the book, Elijah Has Come, make mention of the fact that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Look, again, I cannot overemphasize how incredibly important John as the voice, John as the messenger, John as Elijah was, even in understanding, not understanding not only Romans 11, but understanding 1 Corinthians 15 and the resurrection. This book will absolutely blow you away. You'll be amazed at how powerful the evidence is. So get a copy of the book. Well, listen, thank you again so very, very much for joining me on this morning's Morning Musings. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic weekend, Lord willing. We'll see you on Monday.